Can you see my screen? Can you hear yes. me? Yes, Mariana, I can hear you. Uh, we're very lucky to have Mariana DeSantis as our next speaker. Mariana is an associate professor at uh, the Department of Computer Control and Management Engineering at Sapienza Universidad di Roma, where she got her PhD in operations research in 2012 under the supervision of Professor Stefano Lucidi. Uh, before coming back to uh, DIAG, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, in uh, 2017, she spent some years as a postdoc having a chance to work at uh, the Institute of Nas the National Research Council at the Technical University of Dortmund and at Alpen Adria University of Klagenfurt and at the University of Padua. Um, so without further ado, please, Mariana, take it away. So first of all, thank you very much, Alexandra and Elias, for organizing this nice initiative and for giving me the opportunity to talk about my research. I am presenting a joint work with uh, Gabriela Eichfelder, Julia Niebling, and Stefan Rachtesschel from Technical University of Ilmenau. So for the next half an hour, we are going to focus on multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. So we want to optimize, in this case, minimize m different objective functions subject to nonlinear inequality constraints. And here we are assuming that both the objective functions and the functions defining the constraints are convex and differentiable. We are also assuming that the decision variables belong to a box, so we have uh, lower and upper bounds on the variables, LU, and we are assuming that some of the decision variables have to be integers. So we have we are in the context of mixed integer problem. Now it is clear that this model is pretty general, and in fact it has been used to model different uh, real world problems. Here I'm mentioning some works that are defining really tailored approaches for the specific applications that they are working on. In this talk, on the other hand, we want to devise uh, a general uh, method, a general approach for dealing with the uh, general model of, of uh, multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem that has also some correctness guarantees. What does it mean to uh, solve exactly a multi-objective mixed integer problem, nonlinear programming problem. So in multi-objective optimization, we have to deal both with the uh, decision space that, or also pre-image space where the decision variables live and the criterion space, the space where the objective functions live. And um, uh, solving exactly a multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear problems mean, problem means to uh, detect both the efficient set in the decision variable space and the non-dominated set in the criterion space. So we say that a point x star, an integer feasible point x star is efficient if there is no other integer feasible solution x such that its image f of x is less or equal component wise than f of x star with f of x different from f of x star. If we have two points, x star and x both integer feasible, we say that x star dominates x and also f of x star dominates f of x if f of x star is less or equal than f of x component wise. Now to visualize what I'm saying with this definition, here is the image set for a bi-objective uh, uh, mixed integer instance. We are assuming that the image set is made of the union of these four sets, F1, F2, F3, F4, that can be seen as the image from fixing the integer values variables to four points. The non-dominated set is the um, bold black line uh, uh, that is highlighted. And you can see that we cannot even rely on the fact that the non-dominated set is a connected set. In this case, it is a disconnected set. For example, Z star, the point Z star is belonging to the non-dominated set. It is a non-dominated point as there is no integer feasible solution whose image belongs to uh, Z star minus R2 plus. On the other hand, Z prime is a dominated point. As you can see that there are points, integer feasible point whose image belongs to Z prime minus R2 plus, and in particular, for example, Z star dominates Z prime. 
all the points belonging to F3, that prime has point belonging to F3, are dominated. So the literature on sol solution approaches for multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem is still very limited. However, we can, uh, let's say, divide into two main approaches. There exists decision space algorithm, so in, in general, in multi-objective um, algorithms that work on, in the space of decision variables. And uh, in the context of mixed integer nonlinear programming problem, they try to extend what is, has been developed for single objective uh, MINLPs. And there exist criterion space algorithms that work in the criterion space, is the, in the image space where the objective functions live, and look for non-dominated points by addressing a sequence of single objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. However, the, um, the, um, the works that I am mentioning are either addressing purely integer problems, either they are uh, they have to rely on specific assumptions on the functions that uh, that are involved in the problem or have no uh, correctness guarantees. So in this sense, what we are proposing can be seen as the first general purpose method for uh, dealing with multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem with the convexity assumptions on, on uh, objective functions and um, constraints. The method that we are proposing is a branch and bound method that is based on partitioning the feasible set of our problem and in this sense can be seen as a decision space search method. The branching rule that we adopt is, um, is simply we go on by bisecting our box B. Remember that our variables live in a, in a box. For the upper bound computation, we rely on evaluating the objective functions on integer feasible solutions, and we are going to see how we are able to detect integer feasible solutions. For the lower bound computation, we use linear outer appro approximation on the image set. Now, to go into details on what we do, I need to introduce some notation. Remember, we have our box B, we call with BG, the set made of our variables belonging to B, that also satisfy the nonlinear constraints. With BGZ, we um, identify the variable X belonging to B that satisfy the nonlinear constraints and the integrality constraint. So with this notation, we can write our problem in compact form as the minimization of F of X with X belonging to BGZ. So along the uh, nodes of our branch and bound, we keep updated two lists of points belonging to the image set, belonging to RM. We have the, potent the list of potentially non-dominated solution. So as soon as an upper bound is computed, so the image of an integer feasible solution, we check in case this point is non-dominated, and if it is, we update the list of potentially non-dominated solutions. Otherwise, we discard it. Related to the list of potentially non-dominated solutions is the list of local upper bounds. This is a concept that has been first introduced in the context of uh, continuous multi-objective optimization by Katrin Klamroth and co-authors. And we use local upper bounds in order to have a criterion to prune our nodes. So assume we are at the generic node of uh, the branch and bound, we are considering a subbox B tilde of B. We have our list of potentially non-dominated solution and the corresponding list of local upper bounds. We can prove that if there is no local upper bounds belonging to the image of the integer feasible solutions of B tilde plus Rn plus, then the subbox B tilde cannot contain any efficient point for our problem. To understand what this theorem is saying, here is an example. We are always showing the image set, and in this case, this example is a by objective purely integer instance. So we are at the node of our. Uh, branch and bound, 
we have selected our um, sub box B tilde with the black dots. Uh, we see the image of integer feasible solutions belonging to the tilde. With the green dots, we have our potentially non-dominated solution, and with the crosses, we have the local upper bounds. So you see that the local upper bounds are defined considering the, the components of potentially non-dominated solution. In this case, um, the box B tilde can be uh, disregarded, the node can be drawn as no local upper bounds belong to F B tilde GZ plus F2 plus, in this case, RM plus. Now, the question is how can we compute lower bound? How can we deal with F B tilde GZ? So, at a generic, uh, again, we, we are going to see all the steps of lower bound computation, relying on uh, an example of a by objective purely integer instance, instance and looking at the image set. We have a subbox B tilde. This is the image set. A lower bound is any set in Rm, so even a point in Rm, such that LB tilde plus Rm plus contains FB tilde GZ. So, of course, ideally, we would like to have the convex hull of FB tilde GZ. What we do is looking for sets LB tilde such that LB tilde plus Rm plus contains the convex hull of FB tilde GZ. So at every node of our branch and bound, we uh, compute linear outer approximation of the convex hull of FB tilde GZ. And we can extend the uh, pruning condition that we have just seen by saying that if there is no lo uh, local upper bound belonging to LB tilde plus RM plus, then there is no possibility that B tilde contain any efficient point and we can disregard box B tilde, we can prune the node. So how do we compute the outer approximation, the linear outer approximation of the convex hull of F B tilde GZ? The first thing that we do is uh, looking at the continuous convex relaxation of our problem on the subbox B tilde. So we look at F B tilde G, so the image of points belonging to our box B tilde, and that satisfy only the nonlinear uh, inequality constraints. And we compute the ideal point of F B tilde G, meaning we are mm, uh, minimizing our M objective function. So we have to deal with the M convex continuous problems in order to build this point FID in Rm that is in fact a lower bound for our case. Then we look, we check if our pruning condition holds. So we scroll down the list of local upper bound and in case our, we find a local upper bound that belongs to LB tilde plus Rm plus, we cannot prune the node, but we try to improve our lower bound, computer a computing a further other plane that is, in fact, a supporting other plane for F B tilde G. We do that by solving a further convex continuous optimization problem. Now, this continuous optimization problem has been used in the context of multi-objective continuous optimization, and it has been proved that starting from the solution of this problem and getting the Lagrange multiplier for the, for the constraint f of, e, f of x less or equal than p plus te, e here is the all one vector, we get a supporting ever plane of f b tilde g. We have two, possi two possibilities, either the, the optimal solution t hat is greater than zero, and in this case, it means that we, our supporting upper plane is cutting our local upper bound. And then we insert this supporting upper plane within the definition of our lower bound. And we go on scrolling the, the list of local upper bounds. Otherwise, if t hat is less or equal than zero, still we cannot uh, say we, we can prune the node. 
and our trial is to further uh, improve our lower bound by ultra approximating the convex hull of FTT delta GZ. And to do that, we address a single objective mixed integer convex programming problem. So taking the Lagrange multiplier lambda hat, lambda hat that we had from the convex problem solved before, we uh, consider the minimization of um, the conic combination of, of the objective functions with lambda hat over our um, integer feasible uh, region in B, in B tilde. And we both compute uh, a supporting other plane for the convex hull of F B tilde GZ. And we get an integer feasible solution as the solution of this mixed integer uh, nonlinear programming problem is feasible for our original problem. So we get an upper bound for our original problem. Again, we two, possi two possibilities exist. Either uh, our local upper bound is cut by this further um, um, either plane, and this is in fact the situation that um, has been plot. And then we improve our outer approximation by this further either plane and go on scrolling the list of, lo of local upper bounds. Otherwise, we cannot uh, cut our local upper bound. And then we simply go on bisecting our box P tilde. So uh, as I said, our method uh, has correctness results. As input, we have a prescribed precision, delta greater than zero. And as output, MOMIX is able to give a list of subboxes P tilde with width at most delta and a list of upper bounds that are making the uh, potentially non-dominated solutions list. We can prove that the list of subboxes P tilde with width less than delta is in fact a cover of the efficient set. And we can also prove that the non-dominated set is contained in this beautiful set that is defined from the uh, list of potentially non-dominated solution and the related local upper bounds. Now to understand this second theorem, here is an example on, again, on a bi-objective instance, a mixed integer instance. What the result is saying here, so we are plotting in black dots, the non-dominated solutions and the local upper bounds. In gray dots, we have the upper bounds computing al computed along the iterations of MOMICS. What the result uh, the result is saying is that the non-dominated set cannot be below the gray line that is uh, there, and in fact belongs to this stripe or tunnel or whatever it can be called. So now let's see some numbers. We are going to show a table uh, in, on the comparison between momics and momics light. So we have also considered a version of momics where we do not consider any uh, mixed integer nonlinear problem. And they are both implemented in MATLAB. And for the um, uh, solver, we are considering Urobi. Since uh, the instances that we are considering are involving only quadratic functions, so convex quadratic functions. So we have convex quadratic functions in the objective and in the cost space. We also see a comparison with the epsilon constraint method that is a criterion space uh, search method. And finally, I'm showing you uh, an example with the three objectives. So here is the table for the comparison between momics and momics light. We have implemented two branching rules. Both branching rules, BR1 and BR2, um, rely on the, um, um, on the largest edge. So we, we, need, we want to choose on which variable to branch. We are at the box B tilde. And we look for the dis uh, on the distance between UI and LI, so the biggest distance. Um, for the uh, branching rule one, we are giving priority to integer variables. So 
the first branch on integer variables. For the second branching rule, we do not give priority on, on uh, integer variables and we just look at the largest edge. So it's not clear. There are instances, for example, in an instance T3, branching rule 2 is working better. By the way, the, the, main, um, um, the main thing from this table is that it clearly it pays off to solve uh, the mixed integer um, nonlinear programming problem for computing improved lower bounds. So this for sure comes at an additional computational effort, but it pays off. Regarding the um, comparison with the epsilon constraint method, so how does the epsilon constraint method work? As I said, it is a criterion space search method, so it solves a sequence of parameter-dependent um, mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. We are minimizing one of the two functions. Here we are seeing uh, a bi-objective example, so we minimize one function, in this case F2, and we consider as constraint f1 less or equal than epsilon, where epsilon vary between the minima of f1 and f2. And for the step size of our, uh, uh, let's say, right hand side in the, um, uh, in the constraint, we are considering uh, delta, the same delta, the same precision parameter that we are using for monics. So, here we see on the picture um, up left, we see the image set of, uh, uh, of our problem, the complete image set, while in the other picture we have the zoomed part of the image set in the three uh, disconnected parts. We have that uh, the epsilon constraint method has to solve 475 single objective mixed integer problem but is able to detect only 52 uh, non-dominated solution. And in fact, especially the first part of the image set of the non-dominated set is not very well approximated. And anyway, the epsilon constraint method is not able to guarantee any precision in the solution. So just to give you an example on a three objective instance, I am plotting the um, uh, potentially non-dominated solutions obtained using monics on a three objective instance. Again, with the gray dots, we see uh, the upper bounds computed, computed along the aggregation of the, of the algorithm and the black dots are the potentially non-dominated solution found. I conclude, so we have seen uh, branch and bound method for multi-objective mixed integer nonlinear programming problem that uh, rely on considering linear outer approximation of uh, the image set as lower bounds. And uh, the big thing is that we are able to uh, correctly detect both the efficient set and the non-dominated set for MO and MINLPs. So if you want to look for other details, you can uh, have a look at this paper that has been um, published some months ago. Thank you very much for your attention. These are also uh, the references I, I have mentioned along my talk. Uh, grazie, Mariana. Uh, and uh, I, we, we have some time actually for questions. Uh, so if you have a question, please raise your hand and, in the participants panel. And, uh, or sorry, I'm not sure where it is that the raising the hand uh, part is. Uh, but then I will unmute you. And in addition, you, if you feel more comfortable asking questions in the breakout rooms, we'll have those in a couple of minutes. Okay. Go ahead, Pietro. Um, the, hi, can you hear me? So yep. uh, thanks. Very nice talk, Mariana. Uh, I was wondering about uh, one thing. So you say that these problems are mixed integer. Uh, the, yes. the graphs that you showed, they have points. Does that mean yes. that the objective functions are uh, so, contain uh, integer I, variables? 
I should have said that. So just for uh, sake of presentation, I prefer to show everything on purely on a, on an example of purely integer instance. So, but no, maybe you are you are mentioning really the the results that I'm showing. This yes. one. Yes. Yeah. No, no. So this is uh, a mixed mixed integer, but uh, so the points. This is the image set. We are only showing what are the potentially non-dominated solutions. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in case of a mixed integer where both objective functions have uh, a continuous variables, you would have lines, so segments between points, right? It's that. So it is a con continuous, like uh, I show you the very first example. <laughs> This is how the non-dominated set should look. It's a right. can be a continuous line, disconnected line, as the the one I also showed, for example, with, in the comparison with the epsilon constraint method. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have another question, uh, if, if there's time. So the separation algorithm is basically based on um, the, the same problem you're trying to solve, right? So. You're trying to minimize a convex combination of uh, uh, the two objective functions, and uh, which is likely what you've done already in the uh, in one node of the branch and bound. So uh, we've done this thing some time ago, where basically we we base the lower bound um, uh, computation for a biobjective problem on the problem itself so if you change the problem slightly you can get actually uh, a problem that corresponds to your separation and uh, so so you don't need to explicitly solve a problem just for for, for finding a hyperplane you mean already for, for in this case yeah yeah because basically you have a, a problem here that is an optimization problem and uh, and in order to uh, find a, um, a separation hyperplane, you solve a very similar problem because you're basically solving a problem on the on the same objective functions on a combination of those objective functions. Yes. So uh, I think there's one way to actually use the solution uh, from the same problem you were trying to solve in order to find a, um, a separating hyperplane. It, I know it works in mixed integer linear problems in by objective mixed integer linear problems, but I'm not sure if it works exactly yes, the same way in convex in the convex case. I guess I know the work you are mentioning. Maybe I should have a look and understand if if this can be done also in here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Pietro, for the questions and. I guess in the interest of time, I'm going to stop recording and uh, thank both of our speakers. And I will say that we are going to have another session of DOTS next uh, month. That will be on okay, the last Friday of March, I'm going to say, because I don't remember what date that is off the top of my head. Actually, I do know because it's the same date as today. It's March 26th uh, because of how it works with February being 30 days this year or 20. That's not true. <laughs> um, so I will see you all back in a month. And uh, in the meantime, please stick around for either hanging out in the general session or going to ask the speakers questions in the breakout rooms. Um, and thank you very much for attending and see you next time.